Oh, the blood. The entire album was was uh, it was so easy to do. If you spend time with the Lord in fellowship, you're usually spending time in prayer. You're spending time in worship. You're spending time in meditation. And as a musician, you get your guitar out. You start singing the Lord. And you worship Him. So every song came came out of that type of environment. I didn't have to think about oh, I'm going to write a song. I don't I don't sit and like grab my guitar and go. I think I'll write a song now. I just it's just out of fellowship with the Lord. And every song came together within five or ten minutes. It was just like that atmosphere from one after the other. You're just there and you're planning on, okay. So we come in the studio. I They, they have a beautiful set of uh, monolith drums, uh, which they've sponsored me for years. Um, and we went in and basically uh, Jamie and Jim were recording the drums, sitting in the control room, and we st we, we overdubbed the drums. It's, it's, it sounds so crazy. Like it's, it was almost all backwards, right? Having Skip Prokop be the drummer behind in, on the songs was was absolutely a no brainer. One of the things that was missing on the other CD was there were certain sounds that didn't have the beat, the pace that I wanted. And everything changed when when Skip got involved. It, it, you know, it was like Bert getting involved, and then Skip, and then I meet you, and then everyone else at IM Studios. It just it just all came together. I guarantee it. I've already got a whole, a whole other album written. So when this thing is done and what's out there and we're going and so forth. Um, when I come back, it'll be coming back to this studio. And I tell everybody who wants to record, just go to I Am Studios. Get it done and get it done right. Waiting there for me I, I grew up, I gave my life to the Lord when I was 10 years old. My father, um, he came home one day and he had a cigarette in one hand, a pack of cigarettes in one hand and a bottle in the other. And he says, I'm pouring it down the drain and get rid of the cigarettes. He said, I met the Lord and there'll be no more of that in our household. And I remember being at a Pentecostal church one evening on a Sunday night, and the, the man gave an altar call, and I looked at my father, and I said, can I go down there? He goes, you know why you're going down there? I said, yeah. He says, you can go down there. And I went down, and when I met the Lord there, that was it. Rolling through my mind, a wave of great emotion. Music was part of my life like everybody else's, where you listen to the songs and you listen to certain people. Uh, of course, back then, Christian music was quite different than it is now. <clears throat> And one day we had a, a kid come into the church on a, a youth rally. He got up there and he sang, and I went, wow. And then I met him after service. Somehow the Lord hooked us up, and we become fast friends. Next thing you know, I went to Niagara Falls with him and spent a week with him and that. And by the time I was up there visiting over the March break and the holidays, uh, my whole voice had changed. That was like to me like the Holy Ghost transformation. There was like, by the time I came back from there, I was singing. It's 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 just that it's like the Lord lays a hand on you and goes, okay, what, what's on him is coming on you. So whatever comes out of me now, as I, I mentioned earlier, came from that experience and that relationship with him. And I haven't I'm older now and I haven't seen him in a long, long time. Oh the Blood was originally You Are the Answer. Um, that song was written a number of years ago with a, a good friend of mine, Mark Blaney. Um, we finished it, went to a buddy's house, recorded it, and just in this guy's basement. I thought it sounded not too bad at the time, but you know, at that stage, I thought, well, there's a lot of work to do. I took it to a professional studio and uh, that Mark knew of, and I kind of liked it, but it still wasn't there. And I, it's kind of like things in prayer, walking with the Lord. You go, something's not quite right yet. You just know in your spirit, I can't, you know. But the people that heard it all said, well, where's the rest of the album? I said, well, I've got the song, but we're, you know, I could do it one at a time. It's not cheap. So f from there, I I, uh, I I wrote a lot of songs through that that you know that are part of the album right now, and Mark co-wrote some of them. And <clears throat> I did "You Are the Answer" at, a, at another studio through a friend of mine, and I was happy with with the majority of it. Um, it was good production in that, but it was there were some things that weren't quite right. So I had a bunch printed, and I kept them in my garage, and I only had a few people that come up to me and say to me, "Hey, where's that CD?" And I sold you know sold a few of them from there, but I didn't really want to promote it and get it out there. There was something inside that wasn't quite right that I. Once you, there's only a, you only have one chance at a first impression, right? So I was like, this is not my best stuff. It can be better than this. I know musically it can be better. So I had to be at work one day. And this, I was talking to this lady, and I knew, found out she was a believer. Actually, I knew she was a believer before I even before she told me she was. And uh, I said, hey, I've got a, a CD you might want to listen to. I didn't know who she was. She takes the CD home, and she comes back the next day and says, my husband wants to talk to you. He really likes your CD and wants to see you at the house. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't know who her husband is. So she says, makes an appointment, I go to the house, and this guy meets me at the door with about 10 or 12 pages of handwritten notes. He goes, I really like your CD. It's great for a demo, <laughs> which we thought was, was more than a demo. He says, if you want to make it world class, I got some great ideas for it. 
and her Skip Pro Cop from Lighthouse. The first thing that caught my ear immediately was the strength of his voice. He's a really powerful singer. I'm listening to the CD and I'm going, oh, you know, man, even if I redid the drums on this, it's like the songs aren't finished. The Okay, I got to go and get away and listen to this, right? You know, you walk into the house and you see Platt and you see Gold Albums, you go, okay, I'm listening. There's someone who's been there, done it, been with all the people, and I'm like, I'm a fish out of water for all this industry, right? We're sitting on the Chesterfield. We got the table out here. And so he comes in and we're chatting for a few minutes, you know. And I, I mean, I got already got a file this thick, right? So I open it up. I said, Paul, you know what, man, honest to God, uh, if you want me to do the drums, I'll do the drums. But, it, you know, it, to me, I think this CD could be, uh, you know, a thousand times better. And doing the drums is not going to, you know, make you a happy guy. We're going to celebrate his name. Oh, celebrate his name. Um, I got introduced to IM Studios through Skip, uh, through a CD that he had that he had recorded with his son, Jamie, and with a few other people, and uh, Mercy Train. I thought, man, this is this sounds really good. This guy's got a lot of talent too. He sings good. And of course, Kip with his drumming ability. I mean, it's second to none out there. I mean, he's as world class as world class can be. From there, it was like, okay, you got to come down and meet Jamie. You got to come to the studio. And and being a man of faith and being a Christian, I'm always thinking, about, okay, where do these people fit with the Lord and so on and so forth. And it was quite evident talking to Jamie over the phone that uh, where he was with the Lord. And then when I got to the studio. And I saw the production, how every room was set up and the quality and everything was organized. There was no fishing around. There was no trying to sort things out. They knew what they were doing from start to finish. Everyone that was involved knew what they were doing. And all I had to do really was, was, was be given direction. Okay, stand here. Okay, you're ready to go. We're going to adjust your mics, whatever else, and let's get started. And then I was open to any suggestions and ideas they had, which based upon their experience was a lot of great ideas. And the production shows that in the sound. And from then, it was just a matter of just ease, just go ahead and record. I mean, uh, and it's been nothing but a great experience. I said to James, uh, all right, here's what we have to do. Uh, we, we're going to have to go to the recording studio where Paul originally did this, and we're going to have to break out all the multi-track digitally, go through it, and we'll kind of start building a brand new foundation for the sauce. When you're new to this stuff, as far as the musician side of it, you just let other people who are the professionals do their job and you do it, you know, you think you can do, which means you can sing. So sing the songs the best you can. You wrote them and let these guys bring out what, what they think you're trying to say through the music and what you want to get out there, which is really just talking about the Lord. So basically Jamie uh, and I conferred on, on uh, bringing players in and he, uh, he, he had said, you know what, Dad, I've got some really great guys. We've used at IM Studios on several projects. So we brought Brad Toes in on keyboard. We brought Corey Lacey in on guitar. And we brought Mark McIntyre on bass. All three of these guys are amazing. They set me free. I know the blood. There's a, there's a line there where I plead the blood over all my life. And if you study it out, for people that don't know, they think pleading, they think you're begging. It's not about that. The, the Bible is a legal document, and we have a right to use the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus on our behalf as legal counsel for us, if you would call it that way. We have churches nowadays, and it's very common where they don't talk about the blood. They even have some churches they want every, every song with the blood in it taken out. So pleading the blood is really declaring, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to the Lord, I'm pleading the blood, I'm getting assistance here, I need you involved in this case, I need you involved in this situation. It's not about, oh God, please help me, please help me, because I would never pray that way ever in my life, whatever, beg and pray, you've got to do something. If you don't do something, we're going to fail. Like, that, that's not faith. There's no faith involved in that at all. So that is all about the relationship and the authority of the word, and the authority of the blood, and you're pleading your case, and you're, you're, you're pleading the, the protection of the blood over your life and that, which is extremely important, especially in the day and hour that we're living in. If you read all through the Bible, it's all about the blood. It's about the blood of Jesus, about his life he gave for us. Um, that song is near and dear to my heart. I think it, personally, I think it should be played in every church in the world because I think it's, it's, it has such a strong message about the blood and what he gave us and what he has, what he did for us. Uh, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. You know, I, gee, the word says, I make much of the blood. So many different choices. Music is so universal, right? It's the, it's the language of the, of the universe. But I believe music was originally created for God, and we know that through Scripture and that. I put that quote on, uh, on the CD, 
about music is not entertainment. And the reason, the reason I feel that way is that if I want to be entertained, usually when a person is entertaining, the focus is upon them. You know, the band's going out, the solos are going out, the musicians are going to go out, whatever else. And you know, they want to sell tickets, get people to show up, and, you know, buy stuff and sell things and get out there and maybe make a living at what they're doing. But the focus is always on the band or the, the artist, um, which is fine because that's, you know, it's part of that business. To me, in Christian music or gospel, whichever you want to call it, how can the focus be on the individual when you're talking about, you know, it's, when the songs aren't even about you? They're about Jesus, they're about the Father, they're about the Holy Spirit, they're about the Kingdom of God and all those things. And the Lord gave me a kind of a vision of it one day, a little flash in your mind. Um, this guy's sitting on stage and Jesus is sitting at the, right beside him on the, on the front. Because you know the Bible says that where two or three are gathered together, there we are, he, there he is in our midst. And this pastor gets up and he's going to introduce this uh, soloist to come up and sing or this band, whatever. And the guy looks over to his right and Jesus is sitting there and he goes, wait till you hear this. Well, you think you're going to impress the man? You're not going to impress the master, right? You are the answer, the There's only one who lived on this earth. Name the best representative we could ever have on the planet for mankind, for love, for peace, for joy, for, for healing people, for miracles and all that. You know, and you start talking about the greatest of all time when it comes to these things. Who's influenced the world more than anyone ever? There's only one person, it's Jesus Christ, right? He is the way, the truth, and the life. And that song went through a few transformations. When Mark and I wrote that, it was like he write the first line, I come up the next line back and forth. But there were some things in it that, that didn't gel right with me based upon my walk with the Lord. So I wrote it again the second time, rewrote it. Uh, Mark, supplied all, Mark supplied the chords. And uh, the last time, I got it the way I wanted. You are the answer, you're the way, you're the truth of life. I make it bold and plain and clear. He is not a way. He is the way, plain and simple. And that's it. And when you listen to Help Me Now, you'll hear that incredible soulful solo come in, right, in, in, the, in the little uh, break. On the original CD, the first thing, of course, that I'm going to listen to is the melodic structure and the lyric. And I really... Uh, I, I could really sense the the pain of the storyteller, of course, Paul, right? Of, of the singer, the pain that he was going through, you know, in his life when he wrote that. And, you know, because it's like, you know, how can you say, you know what I mean? How, do, how can you say you know how I feel? You know what I mean? That kind of thing. And we've all been there, right? And I really believe that that song, even when I hear it now, uh, I, it really moves me. I was driving down the 402, coming home from Sarnia. And I'm driving down the road and I was thinking of my wife. I, I like to quote my favorite man of God, nice. Terry Mize. He says, uh, heaven bent low and kissed the earth and we got caught right in the middle of the smack. And I was driving down the 402 and I went, she's still the one who loves with all her heart. And I'm going, uh oh, I got to get to the house right now. And I was only 15 minutes away from the door. It's like, what are you going to do? I didn't have a tape recorder with me. You should carry one in the car. I've, I shouldn't say usually. I always carry a tape in the car that I can, you know, with our cell phones, we can do that now. Before it used to be little pocket tape recorders. And uh, I got to the house as fast as I could, got my guitar, said, oh, that's what that sounds like, and wrote the words down really quick. And I said, I called Mark up because he's, he's really talented. He's written a lot of songs. I said, Mark, I need you to get over here right now. You got to finish this song. You got to help me finish this song. And we, we had it done very quickly in that. And I said, that's it. And I wrote it for our 10th anniversary. It took a long time. It's, it's been 22 years now, but it's for our 10th anniversary. But that's it's all about my wife, my absolute, my bride, my best friend in the world. Absolutely. In the morning when, I when I heard in the morning on the original CD, there was, there was something really, really... Um, um, like Holy Spirit driven in that song, right? It's like Holy Spirit propelled. I mean, you could, you just knew it. But the first time I heard it in my head, I kept thinking, wow, you know, I got to talk to Jamie because I think what we have to do is we, we have to try and capture a picture I have in my head. And that picture is when I was reading the first, you know, a, f a few verses of Genesis, right? Where God is like just looking, right? And then he creates. Do you know what I mean? 
I just had this this like driving force in me to go. This has to sound like those first few, you know, uh, the first chapter of Genesis. I mean, it just has to, right? Where you can just imagine there was nothing, and then you know, there's the sea. You know what I mean? And 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 you know all the things that 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 are in that passage. So anyway. I spoke to Jamie about that, and I said, "Okay, you know what? We gotta we gotta put a whole front end on that, and and then you know, and then it'll like uh, I, I asked Jamie if he you know to do a crossfade out of the one thing into the guitar coming in, right? And then it's very very intimate. It goes just to Paul and the guitar, right? About his intimate moment w- with the Lord. If you read in the scripture, I mean, what did Jesus do? He says he took away, he took away, he hid himself away from the rest of the guys early in the morning to go spend time in fellowship with the Lord, or he'd pray all night. He wanted to get his, he wanted to get things straight, get it right. The thing about in the morning that I really like is that that was a time again when just getting my guitar and I just want to talk to the Lord. And the Lord told me something years ago. I'm sure He's told everybody if you're following Him close enough. The morning time belongs to me. Not the TV, not the radio, not a bunch of phone calls. Start your day out right with me, and the rest of the day is going to be set for everything else that's going to go along. So, you know, I drive a lot, and I drive an hour and a half to work each day. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you that I have great prayer time and fellowship with the Lord. I listen to the Word a lot. I might listen to radio for maybe ten minutes out of that, but the rest of the time, I'm, I'm in, it's my time to fellowship with the Lord. So in the morning is about that. In the morning when I wake up, I call on you. You're the first one I'm thinking about. When I wake up in the morning, it's not about going to work. It's not about who I got, what I got to do today. Is this going to work out? It's my, felt, my focus and my fellowship is upon the Lord. So that's what that song is about, spending time with Him, that quality, intimate time with Him, fellowship with Him, and then the rest of it just flows out of that. The World Searcher for an Answer what was basically uh, the easiest way to explain it is like the verse A would be A section and a B section. And there wasn't anything that really, uh, to me, drove the point home as, a, as in crafting a course, right? On the world of searching for an answer, there's so many people out there and if you follow the, the news broadcast and that, and there's all these different gurus and, and everything else that's out there and some every, people are looking for something. Maybe I'll find it in fame. Maybe I'll find it in money. Maybe I'll find it in, uh, maybe I'll find it in this thing in life or whatever else. I had said to Paul, this is one of the songs that I really, if it's okay with you, I'd really like to write a chorus because it needs to have a chorus so it goes, the song goes completely up and drives the point home. Maybe it's this religion. Maybe this one's got the goods, right? Oh, they got the answer. They got the stuff. We already know he's the answer. So the world is searching for an answer. Is really, you're all searching for so many things, but what you're really looking for is the one that's been there all the time, which is Jesus of Nazareth, right? I wrote uh, the, um, we're going to celebrate his name, be thankful that he came, the name of Jesus, the name above all names, right? Well, there was no such thing in the original. So now what, what Jamie and I were doing was we were taking the, the originals that we had downloaded, that we're using as a guide track, then we're separating them, right? And we're singing this chorus in there with, with like a, a, a beatbox behind it. So we got at least got a click track, right? So winter in my life is like, I, I thought of it like, a, like the wilderness. You know, in the wintertime, you see these trees and they've lost all their leaves. They lost everything. But underneath all that snow and underneath the cold and the ice and everything else, the frost, there's this, it's being fed, it's being grown, it's fed, and it's grown all the time. And all of a sudden, spring comes. And all of a sudden, the bud starts popping out and all the leaves and branches are growing and, the, and everything is changing. And that's what it is in our life sometimes with the Lord that we go through stages at times where we may be facing difficulties and different things in life. But as long as we stay stay in faith and stay in the Word and stay in prayer, that's going to keep growing in our inward man. And all of a sudden, it just breaks through, and we get that breakthrough we're believing for. And it's just like going through that time. But we don't, you know, we don't ever give up. You don't look at a tree and go, "Well, that thing is useless now." It's still working. It's still growing. God's always working on our behalf. Never fail. Margaret's song was written about uh, a lady named Margaret Crumholz, which was my wife's. Uh, best friend and she got cancer and one morning I, one night I was she was in the hospital in London and I grabbed my guitar and I still got the original I keep all my original stuff at home and just grabbed a crayon basically and wrote the uh, 
put this song out, and I was kind of talking to the Lord and talking to her at the same time. The like, first couple of verses, I'm talking to the Lord and saying, you know, I tr I'm trusting in you, and the bridge is talking, Margaret, you know, I know sometimes it seems that things look impossible. And then, of course, the last verse I'm talking about, uh, you know, keep your eyes on him, don't look at the natural, and so on and so forth. But the whole song was dedicated. Uh, and when I did it, and I just called her to the hospital and said, uh, So I called Margaret at the hospital and said, hey, I got a song for you. I just wrote it. She goes, great. So I just played it for her. And then my wife said, well, you're going to call that Margaret song. And that's it. I was going to call it. His word will never fail. And she said, no, you'll call it Margaret's song. And uh, it's a dedication to Margaret. For we walk by faith. You know, there's a lot of songs on uh, the CD that, you know, they cover salvation, they cover drawing closer to the Lord. There's a lot of personal, intimate songs about fellowshipping with Him and so on. Someone told me one time they thought it was a worship CD, and I thought, well, I didn't think it was. I guess there's some songs that are worship on there, but not entirely. There's different flavors, different, you know, different sounds. It kind of has some mild rock to it at times, and it has some contemporary and so on. And she's still the one you could think of be like, gee, that could be country or whatever else. Even doing you uh, accept Jesus, and, um, to me that's just about the whole time of accepting the Lord and getting Him into your life. And that was written, and it seemed to be pretty good. Um, Skip came along and wrote in some bridge in there, which I really like. I think it, I think it takes the song to another level. But even then, when, when all the production was going on, it wasn't quite right. He had a few other things going on there, and I was like, Nah, that's not it. It's not it yet, Skip. And the next thing you know, I come to the studio that day and. Jamie, you had worked on the CD and you had you played all the guitar and you played all that other stuff. And I went, that's it. I even told your father, by the way, don't touch that. I know you have ideas. Don't touch it. It's That's the sound I'm looking for. We're going to leave it. And I think you did a masterful job on that. And that, that just set it off for me, that song. In a nutshell, uh, the answer to my prayer to getting the entire CD done, as far as the, you know, it, it costs to do this stuff. It costs for everybody. Uh, and everyone needs to be rewarded for their, what they're doing. It would not have been possible without without Bert Pullen. Bert's been a long time close friend, and he wondered what was happening with the CD in the past. And I told him, well, I'm not really doing a lot with it yet. I, it's been done pretty good, but I think some things can make it better. When I told him about Skip, and I told him about you know the studio and stuff like that, and he said, I'll, I'll write it up, I'll do it. You just tell me what you want, and I'll get it done for you. It couldn't have happened without Bert. I can't say that's strong enough. And I believe that obviously Bert was used of the Lord to get that done. So I'm just, uh, it was an answer to prayer. There's a blessing in every one of these songs. It, uh, you know, if, if you're a believer, it's going to bless you in your walk. If you're not a believer, there's something going to happen when you listen to this CD. And the first time I heard you are the answer, I went, you finally got it right. You're the only one that's got this right. And you set it up with that with that drums the way you play. It was just so it was so awesome. It's it's go, there's stuff that's uplifting. There's stuff that's uh, lyrically pro, uh, thought provoking. Everything he had in production with on every drum with every song and all the little fills and the things that he knows to do, that only top world class drummers know to do. That's what come out of every song. Coming down, I was saying, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to sing for you. It's all about you get a chance to minister for him. So whoever gets blessed from it in any way or some form or another, that's what I'm looking for. I really believe that in order to take the CD and the material to the bar that we all collectively, including Paul, were praying for, we had to push the envelope, and a lot of it fell on his shoulders, and I thought he did an amazing job. And, of course, Jamie, you coached him on a lot of stuff, and uh, it was great. The whole thing was a blessing. He shed his blood for all my sins. He paid it all for my victory.